in, in being a... Well, I was here when the port, the bottom port got started, and there were no pilots here. And I already had pilots for the Great Lakes, Delaware River, Puerto Rico, okay. all over the place. So they asked me if I'd be interested in being a pilot, and the rest is history. So what's the size limit to a boat? Uh, it's over nine feet. Draft and foreign flag, it has to take a pilot. So nine feet of depth flag. and a foreign flag. If it's you. U.S. flag and they haven't, they don't have pilotage. Thank you very much, Captain. Passenger shore side, copy that. Thank you very much. Can you look at this and just give us a, an idea on where the trickier parts are? It depends on whether it's ebb tide or flood tide. But yeah. if the tide's flooding, it comes across here, goes up in here, and then down through here. So you can get a shear right here uh, at East Quarty Head Light yep. across, which will, if it's running hard, it can really swing the ship. Uh, where are we going today? Right out. There. Oh, we are going yeah. out there. Yeah, but it's slack water now. Yeah, okay. and then on an ebb tide, as all the tide comes down and from from uh, past McQuarty Bay and Cobbscook Bay, and makes the turn right here in this area right here, off Windmill Point, Curry Cove, uh, Cherry Island Light, you get quite a bit of swirling currents. And that's the uh, whirlpool. No, nope, the whirlpool is up in here. What's that one called? This is the old sow. The old sow, yeah. right? Is that really that tricky? Yes, but there is no old sow at slack water. Right. There's nothing, no, right? Right. right? It's just like sitting right here. Right. But then if you try to do it in the middle of the tide, especially two hours flood to four hours flood tide, you're just crazy. You know, just, it's all timing. Everything here is timing and knowing when the predictions and when things are gonna happen. Okay, port 20? It's port a team 20? approach. Right. So yeah, if I give an order and the husband problem. carries it out and he repeats it and the second mate job or whoever's the mate up here, is, his job is to look and make sure the guy puts the rudder over in the right direction, that the engines are sense. put on right, and then the captain's standing back and checking yeah, everything. Zero, four, five. So that you zero, four, five. four people making sure that nobody screws up. What are the challenges in doing what you do in this place, in this, because this is the Bay of Fundy and the tides are very strong. Well, right now the tide's only 17 foot range between high and low, and that's fairly small. When it gets up into the 25, 27 foot range, it's a totally different world. And right now there's not much current, so the ship stayed here at anchor very nicely. But if you had a big current, I wouldn't have left the ship, I'd have stayed right here, just in case she starts dragging her anchor, you know. So it's, uh, and then, when we're docking, it's picking the timing window to dock correctly. And then the next thing after that is how much wind is there, and then visibility. But we work so much in fog that it's, it's, uh, it's important, but it's not as critical. It's, we do it so much that you kind of get used to the process. And mm -hmm. We have protocols that we work out with the pilot boats and the people ashore. Everybody's helping. It's a team effort. It's not one person. And what are the size boats that you've actually guided in? Uh, we bought right to the spot for anchoring the last vessels. They were 852 feet long, and they, when they left, they draw, they'd be drawing 40 feet of uh, water. Um, what, are they a tanker? No, no, no tankers. In, yeah, we've 
these are last ships that lighter aboard ship, which means it picks up a 500 ton barge full of cargo, puts the barge into the ship, and when it gets to Europe, it discharges the barge and barge goes up the river all the way to Geneva, Switzerland. Oh, God, wow. Yeah, so That's up, cool. the, up the Rhine. And uh, it's just one way to, to uh, move cargo. What, what kind yeah. of cargo do they get from around here? 90% of the cargo is wood pulp, which is not pulp wood. It's processed paper out of woodland, out of woodland pulp, LLC. And it's, uh, it's about 80% processed paper. When they get it to the mills in Europe, they blend it with local uh, woods there and make a the particular kind of paper that they're looking for. But it's for it's hardwood wood pulp, so it's very high quality and very high value. That's what that That's they what don't we, have it there. No, no, they don't have a lot of forest hardwood forest. Right. And we do, so that's that's our biggest selling point. And uh, we ship oh f up to four hundred thousand tons a year to Japan, uh, Europe. Scotland, uh, France, Spain, and some into the Middle East, into uh, Turkey, uh, uh -huh. and uh, uh, some a few trips to Brazil, but mostly uh, China, Japan, Korea, and in uh, Europe. Have you seen a drop in the demand for for those products because of the computer and the internet and the lack Not of? Not really. No. No. No, it doesn't seem. It seems the more paperless you go, the more paper there is. <laughs> For, at least in my experience, you know.